Hey YouTube, this is Jimmy with To The Top Crane. Today we're going to do a quick walk around on this crane that we typically take out for some of our heavier lifts and taller lifts. Uh, what we've got is a Tadano 180-G-5. It's a 200 ton American tons crane, 180 ton European crane. So we're going to do a quick walk around, go give this thing a bath. It's filthy dirty. We had it on a job and We've had snow out here in the Midwest and salt on the road and whatnot, so we're gonna try to knock some of that crud off of it and make it look pretty again before we take it out and get it dirty on the next job. So uh, I'd like to give a shout out to Randy with G4 Outdoors. Check his channel out. Uh, he does a lot, of, a lot of different reviews on different things, everything from lawnmowers to well, gun accessories, you name it, he's got it. So anyway, let's do a quick walk around and show you what this thing is made of and we'll go over couple little details on it and this is definitely not an educational video this is going to be for entertainment pleasure on any of our videos so uh, I guess if you want to critique feel free but like I said I'm not trying to educate we're just trying to entertain so anyway I'm gonna pan over to the crane you can get an idea how big it is as far as hydraulic cranes go it's kind of on the medium size but it is the biggest one that we've got so here it is So there it is sitting in the boom dolly. It's four axle dolly, articulates underneath the tower that supports the bottom of the boom. With this particular dolly, we can haul one piece of counterweight with us. So it's nice, cuts out a truck. We've got the block here that we have to reeve every time we take it out and use it. The only alternative is to leave that boom hanging out past the back end of this dolly. And in doing so, whenever you turn, the end of the boom swings out about here so it's not very safe going down the road if we don't configure it this way so anyway we're going to walk down the side of this thing to give you an idea how long it is roughly 80 feet so as we come down the other side you can compare it to the semi that is the support truck for this crane so height wise it's just under 14 it's actually about right at 13.6 two winches. I know uh, people that aren't familiar with cranes, they want to know why you have two. Well, occasionally you have to have two hooks hanging off the end to make certain picks. So two winches is a must on a crane this size. Now to give you some perspective on the height of these tires, I'm going to see if I can set this camera down over here and I'll walk up next to it. Keep in mind, I'm about five foot eight on a tall day. So here, I'll walk up next to the crane for you. apologize if this is shaky this is actually my very first video so this is going to be the first video that hits our channel and i'm using uh, a little hero 5 black just kind of holding on to it if you look out there, there's some more counterweight that we can hang on the back for different lifts different picks and over here is extra jib sections uh, we have a job coming up doing a cell phone tower that's 310 feet tall so when we get to that job you will get to see what those action extra sections of jib are for so now we've come around to the driver's side this is sitting next to the support semi that runs with it and that is a 48 foot semi trailer that i'm going to walk to the back of and you'll get a perspective of how big this thing is you can see this thing is filthy dirty from having it out on the salted roads.
There's swing away jib mounted on the side of the boom. You basically add that to the end of the boom if the main boom isn't long enough. So the end of this in the end of this crane, I'll show you the sections of boom. They're all completely retracted. This has five sections that extend out for a total of 197 feet of main boom. So from that point up on the crane to the end of the boom, fully extended is 197 feet. All right, YouTube, we're back to rolling here. We're gonna just come up here in our yard, make a quick U-turn, go back to another spot in our yard, make another U-turn so we get on the other side of the building. Actually, as big as this crane is, it's pretty maneuverable. It uh, has 10 wheel steer, so that's always beneficial. I don't know if you can see in the rear view mirror at all. I try to get the camera set up where you kind of get a perspective of what I see. And if you can see in the mirror, if you watch to the left side, it almost kind of looks like a train with the dolly following behind us. up a lot of space on the road it drives pretty easy you can drive down the highway at its top speed of 53 miles an hour and drive it with one hand it uh, tracks pretty well and rides pretty smooth it just takes up a lot of room speed semi-automatic transmission so it's got a hydraulically controlled clutch in it. it it's almost like a big truck transmission in the, in the sense the way it shifts gears internally but it uses hydraulics and electric solenoids instead of you having to use a gear shifter 16 forward speeds in the high side 16 forward speeds in the low side tell you going down the highway this thing burns fuel almost faster than you than they can refine it I can raise it and lower it as needed generally for the terrain or uh, when we're setting the crane up it helps to start with it somewhat level makes the setup process a little easier so I can raise and lower the 
front, the back, each side independently. Um, I'll uh, do a quick pan across the inside of the cab so you can get an idea of what I'm sitting in. Show you some of the controls. Okay, let's uh, let's look at some of the controls inside here. We've got speedometer, which is almost useless because this thing won't travel faster than highway speeds. I guess it's handy in the city, but. Um, headlights controls, emergency beacons, this does have fog lights or driving lights. Uh, the center con center console or center cluster here is digital. You can scroll through and we can look and see how much urea we have in our tank sitting at 90%. This thing's also urea thirsty. Those of you out there with diesel pickups that complain about putting some every few thousand miles, this thing I have to put about five gallons in for every hundred miles. Scroll across the side, there's the tack, fuel gauge, then all of our different switches, all of our suspension switches here, level, this, you can hit this before you're ready to roll down the highway when you get down off of your outriggers, and we'll show that in another video, but that basically puts it in travel mode. It, raises the, the suspension to where it needs to be to travel down the highway. We have, uh, actually a Blahpunk CD player. They didn't spare any expense in this crane, so Blahpunk, I guess. Transmission controller, steering controller, parking brake, and the other side of the cab. Hey YouTube, we're back. We got the crane somewhat cleaned up. At least got the salt knocked off of it now so it doesn't look so bad. Thought I'd go over a few things real quick while I'm back on here. The name uh, to the top crane, that isn't insinuating that we're better than anybody else or that I'm the best operator out there because that's not the case. There's always someone better than us in, regard to, in, in regards to what they do on a daily basis. So. I'm uh, definitely not that kind of arrogant person. So to the top crane was incepted because we're going to try to give everybody a different perspective on crane videos. We're going to mount some cameras in different locations. And if you stick around, subscribe, watch some of our videos in the future, you will see why we came up with the name to the top crane. So anyway, again, that's not us being arrogant but you'll figure it out as you watch some of the videos in the future. Um, figure I'd answer a couple questions I get a lot of times from you know, high school age kids or teenagers and whatnot that are somewhat interested in what we do. One of the biggest questions I get is, how much money do you make doing that? Well, I'm not gonna throw an actual dollar figure out there, but I can tell you that my wife, when she had a master's in nursing before she went on and became a nurse practitioner, but when she had a master's in nursing, I made more than she did. So don't let, don't get brainwashed in the, hey, you have to go to college to earn a living. You don't have to necessarily go to college, but you gotta be willing to work. You gotta be willing to train yourself in a field or get involved in some place that will train you in a skill. And you also gotta be not afraid to use your body physically to make some money. So. I know there's a lot of people out there like, oh, the only way you're going to make money is if you go to college and you spend four years sitting in a desk and learning from someone that learned from someone else. That's not necessarily the case. So don't be afraid to get out there and get your hands dirty and teach yourself something and provide a good living for yourself or your family in the future. Another thing I get asked a lot is, how much does it weigh? Well, it's more than your average Prius. so. If you see me getting on the highway and you're in that pre Prius, you might yield. I get that a lot. That's one of the worst things that I that I encounter driving this thing down the road is people not, not yielding at the bottom of on-ramps when I'm passing by that on-ramp. I don't get over in this crane and it's not because I'm a jerk and because I don't want to let you on the highway. It's because it's 80 feet long. It's also close to 11 feet wide. So for me to put this in another lane is terribly inconvenient and sometimes dangerous. So when you're out on the highway and you're coming down your on-ramp and you're thinking about your day, 
and there's a big truck or a crane like this and you're in the right hand lane and they're not getting over for you it's not because they're a jerk they just need the space so when you're traveling down the road give us some room that's that's one of the biggest factors in driving a machine this big is people giving me space so again it, it's not because we're jerks it's because we need the space we need the room so pay attention and another deal i run into driving this thing down the highway is people will start staring at it i actually saw an accident happen because a person was gawking at the crane while i was driving by and they didn't see the person stopped in front of them, they rear-ended them so yeah it's great to look at a lot of people are interested in it that's a good thing it will help my channel but if you're gonna stare at it make sure you do it safely make sure you're aware of your surroundings that are going on in front and front and side and behind you so um, I encourage everyone to exercise caution when they're traveling down the highway near anything this size or this size so that's uh that that sums it up on what does it weigh it weighs more than your prius i i can tell you they don't put this much lug nuts or this many lug nuts on it because it's light and then probably the question i get asked the most often and it seems kind of ridiculous well how fast is it probably the best answer to that is it's not i would give you a zero to 60 time but it doesn't go 60 miles an hour so when you see me on the highway, if you're stuck behind me, I apologize. I'm doing what I can. That poor little V8 Mercedes is pulling a lot of weight. So if I'm climbing a hill, for instance, there's one south of St. Joe where we're based out of, north of Kansas City, it's in Platte City. I top that hill at about 18 miles an hour if anybody's familiar with that hill. So, and that's 18 miles an hour with my foot flat on the floor. That's everything it's got. So I apologize if you're stuck behind it and it's slow. I will tell you it will go 50 on flat ground, but you can you can clock the zero to 50 time probably with a sundial. So it's a very slow moving machine. But we've got some jobs coming up next week that hopefully we'll get some more camera angles on it and you guys can actually see it doing what it's designed to do. Uh, by then hopefully I have a second camera we'll maybe get some views for you that there's not a lot of crane videos out there with the same views so I'm going to try to get one up there in the seat or up there in the cab with me so you can see from my perspective what I'm doing I may even mount it on my hat mount the camera on my hat that might be the only way to get good shots that way you guys can see exactly what I see then the other camera we're either going to slap it on the end of the boom or put it on the block. I haven't decided yet, but one way or another, you guys will get a bird's eye view, which is a view I don't even get. So it should be interesting. And uh, being in the crane rental business, we're doing different things all the time. So if you like what we're doing, please subscribe, follow along, share with your friends. We'll get some more videos out there and posted. And Hopefully everybody will get a different perspective on uh, the kind of stuff we do every day. So anyway, anyway, thanks for watching and I will try to refine my video skills. This is my very first video and if anybody that knows me knows I hate cameras. So I'm going to work on overcoming that. So thanks again and everyone have a wonderful day.